Hey guys, so today we have another concept car video. It's been a while since I last did one, but this one is far more special and meaningful than most of the other episodes, and that's because we're focusing on the 1964 Dodge Charger Roadster concept, the car that started it all for Dodge. The Dodge Charger has seen seven generations of vehicles and has become an American muscle car legend, with millions of people around the globe driving these cars. None of that ever happens without the 1964 Dodge Charger concept. There's also a fascinating story behind the car as it truly wasn't built properly and finished until some 40 years after its release. You can find the video outline on screen, where today we're going in depth on the background info, exterior and interior, performance, and the crazy story behind this beautiful concept car. So let's get started. There are arguments about the origins of the American muscle car, but the first one debuted in 1949 with Oldsmobile offering the Rocket 88. Nobody actually called it a muscle car back then, as that term originated in the 1960s, with the Pontiac GTO hitting the market in late 1963, launching the muscle car idea and coining the phrase. Chrysler had been preparing to unleash their secret weapon for the muscle car competition, that being their new 426 cubic inch Hemi V8. Chrysler wanted it to launch in a special way, so the company approved this Charger concept, the first use of the Charger nameplate by Chrysler, and this 1964 concept debuted at the Milwaukee Auto Show from November 16 to 24, 1963. Crazy enough, this Charger concept had such a positive response that Dodge came out with another one the very next year, calling it the 1965 Dodge Charger 2 concept car, and that was more closely styled to how the production Charger would come out in 1966. But today we're just focusing on the 1964 concept. This was an era of concept cars that were simply 3D canvases, a work of art on display without the intent to function. Chrysler's design team wanted to change that, with the concept of what the Charger could and would end up being. The concept was based on a hardtop two-door Dodge Polera that was hacked up into the creation that you see on screen. Chrysler Corporation's Vice President and Director of Styling, Elwood Engel, talked about the car, saying, quote, The Charger's styling speaks Dodge. Our design gives this specialty car a youthful, get-up-and-go appearance, which reflects the Dodge image as an all-out, dependable performer." End quote. Obviously, most of the stock parts of the Polera were removed and replaced. The chrome bumper was replaced by a single, smoothly blended rolled pan with four small rubber Nerf bars. The grill was replaced with a blacked-out, hand-built unit with the inner high-beam lights deleted. The hood line was contoured slightly and a functional cold air scoop, or ram charger scoop as some call it, was added to the top of the hood. The upper line of the headlight cover, along the side of the doors, and all the way back to the rear deck was lowered, and the body side trim was reduced. Just like the front, the rear bumper was also replaced by rubber bars. Stock taillights were used, just spread further apart. Other custom touches included shaved door handles and a pair of chromed exhaust ports, which would operate with cutouts that diverted the exhaust from the stock dual mufflers. Special Halibrand wheels were fitted with Goodyear Wingfoot white wall tires. The rear wheel wells were designed to accommodate wider wheel and tire combos for racing. The Charger concept was just under 48 inches high with a 119 inch wheelbase, so it gave it a low aggressive and wide stance and a rich burgundy paint job, creating a stunning look that a kid like me can still appreciate over 58 years later. While the outside shared many similarities with the Polera, the interior was entirely different and custom built. The car was transformed into a two-seat design with a special low-cut wraparound windshield that was only six inches high, paired with lowered side glass. There's also an incredible roll bar, which covers the rear seating area and has integrated headrests built into it. There's also a very unique full-length console and upper cockpit divider that literally divides the driver from the passengers, even continuing the dual white stripes as they cut right through the interior. The divider is leather trimmed and features an 8,000 RPM tachometer mounted at eye high level. The stock instrument cluster was also retained. The bucket seats were made from super form padding and covered in dark charcoal leather. Black cut pile carpet covered the floor, side panels, and cowl section. Walnut trim was used on the three spoke steering wheel, passenger grab rail, and the gear shifter, while bright metal trim was used for the pedals. I also love the look of that Fratzog logo on the steering wheel, which was used in different Dodge vehicles from 1962 to 1981. As we talked about, the whole point of this concept was to showcase the Chrysler 426 Hemi, which came straight out of Chrysler's NASCAR racing program and featured a hemispherical combustion chamber, which is where it gets its Hemi name from. This was a 7 liter V8 with 425 horsepower at 5000 RPM and 490 pound-feet of torque at 4000 RPM. Here's where things get interesting. 
So this engine platform had been chosen for the future Dodge Charger platform, but there was a huge problem. A very limited number of hand-built motors were being produced for select racing teams, and one was marked for use in the Charger concept. However, when a Chrysler-backed racing team blew up their Hemi, the engine that was supposed to be used in the concept car was given to them instead. As it got closer to release day for the concept, there just weren't any spare 426 Hemis lying around that Dodge could use for the Charger, since they were all needed for NASCAR racers. So in shameful fashion, Dodge had to put the stock 383 cubic inch Wedge V8 under the hood, the stock engine that came with a donor Polara. That 6.3 liter V8 had 305 horsepower and 4 10 pound feet of torque, paired with a beefed up 2 speed automatic transmission. So the car's fender badges falsely advertised 426 inches of glorious Hemi motor. Legend has it that as the car toured the country, the engine compartment was never opened as apparently Chrysler hadn't told anyone how to open the hood, so no one could call them out on their screw-up, letting them get away with it. In the end, this was just a Polara in disguise. Other specs included an independent torsion bar in the front and rear semi-elliptic lead spring suspension, a 4.56 to 1 sure grip rear axle, and four-wheel hydraulic drum brakes. And that's not where the story ends. Typically, these show and concept cars back then would all be destroyed after touring the auto show circuit. This car managed to escape the crusher's jaws, finding its way into the public. The car was originally owned by Paul Stern, who ran a Chrysler dealer in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and happened to be a very big collector. He obviously knew someone in the industry and managed to get his hands on it originally. His son inherited it and sold it to another dealer. In 1999, the car would finally change hands, as concept and show car collector Joe Bortz negotiated the purchase and took it home to Chicago. As he claims, he had been trying to buy the thing for 12 years from that dealer before they finally agreed upon a deal. And that's where the story continues. Joe embarked on a project that would take five years, bringing the car back to as it was intended to have been built, with an expensive rotisserie restoration. World famous restorer Fran Roxas helped to restore every inch of the car, and he was even able to find period correct original Halibrand alloy wheels. Those were a huge piece of the puzzle, so with that complete, the whole project gained a ton of momentum. With the car essentially finished, the one literal glaring hole was under the hood. As I said, Joe Bortz wanted to bring the Charger back as it was intended to have been built, so that meant putting an original 426 Hemi engine under the hood. Not just any Hemi would be good enough, but one of the original 15 hand-built racing Hemi engines that was supposed to go into the Charger back in 1964. For this, Bortz turned to Hemi expert John Arutza in Trinity, North Carolina. His request, quote, Don't just build any plain old 426, build one with all original 64 parts, end quote. So somehow he was able to find one of the originals, the 10th one built, complete with a block casting that was dated October 1963. It even came with the original 1964 NASCAR spec Hemi heads and vintage Holly 4 barrel carburetor. Many other components using the engine bay were new old stock parts, which refers to aged stock of merchandise that was never sold to a customer and is still new in original packaging. A few internal engine components were new, like Manly connecting rods, Ross custom pistons, and Cali's forged crank. So when all said and done, the 426 Hemi had a 9.6 to 1 compression ratio and an estimated 600 horsepower. Finally, the 1964 Dodge Charger concept could match its 426 Hemi badging almost 40 years later, once the car got completed in 2003. Of course, the 426 Hemi also made it to the production Dodge Charger in 1966. Roxas claimed this restore was one of his finest achievements, and Arutza acknowledged that his expertise had helped to preserve a huge piece of automotive history. The car would eventually be auctioned off, not once, but twice by RM Auctions. The first was at the Monterey Sports and Classic Car Auction in August 2007, fetching $1.1 million US. The buyer was Texas lawyer John O'Quinn. Unfortunately, he died on October 29 of 2009, so the car would get auctioned off again in Arizona in January 2011. This time it went for much lower, down to $715,000 US. And as of now, I couldn't find anything on its current whereabouts. It seems like the car is rarely driven, and both Roxas and Arutza have warned owners that driving the car too hard could cause too much stress on the chassis and body. So that's the end of this video on the 1964 Dodge Charger concept. It's an unbelievable story of a car that began the muscle car dream for Dodge, and almost beyond belief that the car really wasn't completed until almost 40 years after its release. So what do you guys think of the first Dodge Charger? Let me know down in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed the video, and make sure to like and subscribe for a lot more Mopar content, and let me know if you want to see other concept car videos like this one. I'll see you in the next video.